The following podcast is brought to you by the Jonas Podcasting Network, found exclusively at wrestlingwithjonas.com. Another episode of the Choke Slam Wrestling Report. I am your host, the infamous Ultimate One, and we're coming through the YouTube channel today. And we're gonna talk about two topics. One of the topics is what happened on Sunday at the AEW Revolution with that dud that never exploded in the ring. And second, what are your thoughts now that the Inner Circle is not the only big faction in there at the MJF? Pretty much set up the inner circle this past Wednesday. We're going to have that and a lot more. Before I start, guys, uh, you guys can follow me on the YouTube channel, like I said. And you can also follow me in the audio podcast, Spotify, Apple, uh, iHeartRadio, Amazon, and any major audio podcast channels that you guys like to listen to your favorite podcast. Also, um, uh, have a merchandise podcast website is tcwr.veryimpressive.com that's tcwrveryimpressive.com and a lot of you guys i want to thank those who have bought the merchandise from the website i uh, in there once you go into the website you can listen to any of my podcasts there also you can listen to the youtube channel uh you can see all my podcasts um uh well the latest podcast that i put up which probably this one will be up today and you can also listen to the audio when you hit that uh the logo this is chokesland wrestling report Le- leads you straight into the apple podcast uh archives and i yesterday i just put a um the aew review that i usually put on every thursday so let's talk about what happened on sunday so I've been getting into arguments with people online who keep think, saying that, that it should have never explode because um, it was scripted. First of all, if Tony Khan decides that he wants to promote a match, the bar wire explosion match, which I know Kenny Omega, again, is one of the EVP guys who comes up with these ideas, which it was a great idea, you know. And if he wanted an explosion and then it happened, why would uh, other dirt sheets and Wrestling Inc. and Fightful Select and, and Wrestle Talk claim that he was upset because there was no explosion? Okay. So I got people want to argue with me and say that it wasn't supposed to happen. Well, if you're going by what Tony Khan said after the match, then you're a fool. Because it was supposed to happen. Somebody in the back kind of messed up. Maybe it wouldn't have been a C4 explosion like these Japanese wrestling um, stuff. Maybe the explosion would have happened outside of the ring and made it look like it exploded. And Moxley, you know, and Eddie Kingston would have been, you know, not exploded. Like, because in reality, when, when Moxley hit um, uh, Kenny Omega with the DDT outside, where they both landed on the boards with wires, that went off, okay? And in Japan, it, you will never see any of these guys go in the ring, go outside the ring, and do a DDT in one of the, do any of those pads outside because those were C4 explosions, okay? I don't know if they were C4, but there was more powerful explosion than what we saw Sunday, okay? But I got guys who wants to argue with me that you know this is not ECW or this is not the 1980s and first of all the 1980s there was no such thing as barbed wire explosion matches this came back in the night late 1990s in FMW and wing okay and I always say if you're gonna come at me you better do your research because if you don't do your research then I'm gonna put you on the spot okay and none of the stuff that 
AEW does most of the time. It's not scripted. I, you're going to read from a paper like WWE and other. This was promoted as a bar wire explosion match. Okay. And it should have exploded. And it didn't. Somebody messed up. Somebody hesitated. Somebody in the back. Because Wrestling Inc. reported that Kenny Omega was livid. So what does AEW does? AEW, of course, um, like I said, um, Tony Khan, after the after the AEW Revolution people, you said that you guys think I'm crazy. I'm going to allow two guys explode and kill themselves. Come on. That's the best you think you could do. So they don't promote the match. Don't promote the match. And Tony Khan has been walking around lately, a very, very cocky guy, calling himself the captain of the Forbidden Door. And I think a lot of the stuff that he's saying is getting to his head. And right now, this is the second pay-per-view that I've seen within the year and a half that they've been around that they've been some kind of effed up. And if you're wondering which, why, which the first pay-per-view was, well, we could go back to All Out when Matt Hardy fell from that lift and cracked his head on the cement floor against Tammy Guevara. And then he claimed that Matt Hardy passed the concussion protocol when it was a lie. Okay saving because he knew he messed up but he came with that and then Rebby hardy put him on blast so some of the stuff that he does it just don't make no sense like he's allowing too many wrestlers to have too much creative ideas and like i said you it's like you 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 i don't know what's going on with aw right now because According to what I thought it would be, you sign all these independent wrestlers when you first started. I figured, well, you will be moving and pushing these guys to another level. Yes, you may have some stars. Brian Cage, what are they doing with Brian Cage? Brian Cage is walking around with a belt, the, the FTW belt, which is not even sanctioned by AEW. He's walking around with a belt that is not worth nothing. And instead of AEW saying, well, you know what, let's add another third singles title and whatnot. And and make something out of it no they're not even doing that they got him in team tags and tag team brian cage is way better than that okay way better same thing with lance archer lance archer the murder hawk one minute he was this monster coming in beating up all the baby face and whatnot now then he turned baby uh baby face and then now he was trying to get getting beat up and people doing things to him and now he's back to a heel so they don't know What's going on? Eddie Kingston went from heel to, I don't know what that beats, a, a tweener, what they call it. He's a heel and a baby face. So, if this continues, and you're allowing the, the, uh, the, uh, what they call that, the people to run the asylum, then we, they're going to have problems. It's going to be fallout like that's happened with WCW, when WCW allowed guys like Hulk Hogan, Kenny, Kevin Nash, Scott Hall, all these guys to run rampant in the back, okay? Not that A, uh, AEW is doing what WCW was doing with the younger talent, but you're allowing people, these wrestlers, to run rampant. Yeah, they say, oh, he's a family, whatever, but you know what? After a while, it's, it's not going to it's not gonna be fun i mean a lot of people are watching it and they, they pinpoint stuff that i'm beginning to see myself here i'll give you a good example christian cage he came in right and christian cage um a mick carter i don't care what everybody say but oh yeah but he was uh, world heavyweight champion and he was a uh, tag team champion and he still to me was a mick carter okay so you bring a mick carter in and right away you got him to face kenny omega which is gonna happen probably double or nothing, maybe May. I mean, I don't see I don't see Christian being Kenny Omega, but I mean, you got other wrestlers you could put in there. Park is one of the guys that gave Kenny a run for his money. They tied up one one, I think, in as far as the two matches. If I'm correct. Uh, I think they had a I think they had a double disqualification or something like that. But I know Park by Park is not the next one online for that to, for that belt. You know what I'm saying? The guy is a beast. He's the only guy that I know that cleanly made Kenny Omega tap out and whatnot. He should be getting a title shot. Moxley got his chance, uh, and, and it looks weird that Moxley don't have that belt, but it looks like Moxley and Eddie Kingston are going to end up feeding with the good brothers. Now, is the Impact World titles, 
I'm going to be on the line when these guys wrestle each other next week. Maybe, maybe not. You know what I'm saying? So it's just, it's just uh, little things that I'm seeing. And the dud was a dud because somebody messed up. And that's why they went on Wednesday and they say face. They made it look. I love Eddie Kingston's promo when he talked about that, um, you know, that he went to an anxiety attack while this thing was about to explode. Good cover up. Because in reality, the dud went off and then he acted like he was unconscious. So that was a good cover up there. Now, Kenny Omega went and did, had to do a cover up because he figured, well, listen, this was supposed to explode. And then messed up. So I got to come up with a cover up. So he said, I love Don Callis promo where he said, you know, we take away moments. He is the invisible hand. He was, they said, if it were exploded, they would have made history. And they still, you know, you know, they would have, they would have uh, taken Moxley's career out. They, 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 they're making it look like they were the ones who uh, told somebody to do the dud. Great cover up. So they had a cover up. So for anybody to come and tell me that it wasn't supposed to explode, it was supposed to explode. And I Wrestling Inc. reported it. Can you make up what's tight? Because somebody messed up. So the match was good. The pay-per-view was great to that part. So let me know what you guys think about this, about the dud. I mean, there was a lot of people comparing it. I compared it to, uh, to a lot of things. I've, by the way, WWE fans were like, and some of WWE talent started making fun of it, whatever. But nobody talks about what Rey Mysterio wrestled Seth Rollins, I for an eye, which they took that idea from uh, Santana versus Moxley earlier in the year last year. And they had a rubber ball come out of nowhere, making it look like uh, Rey Mysterio had lost his eye. So, you know, it's just, it's just incredible how people especially WWE fan forget about this some terrible some terrible um moments in WWE also where they you look at it be like they messed up the ball came out the rubber ball or the rubber eye came out and whatnot and they made it look like he lost his eye yeah okay same thing with AEW they messed up with this dud they messed up now they got you know they did a nice recovery I could say they made a, they did a nice recovery by making up the story that Omega don't know how to make a uh, explosion ring um, uh, Kingston said that he had anxiety that he always had anxiety attack that happens that he passes out nice cover but Tony Khan needs and you cannot promote a bar wire explosion match and disappoint your fans and first of all it was one thing people did not notice in an explosion bar wire match the whole ring is supposed to be covered with bar wires. There was one part where the entryway was was with rope with regular ropes. No bar no bar wire wrapped around it. That was my first of all when I first saw that I was like, okay, that's a miscue right there. Well we came up with the idea, now you just pretty much devaluing the that bar wire match because it's that's supposed to be covered with bar wires. If you can't come in, you know, you should have just opened it up, let the wrestlers come in, then cover that shit up with bar wire. But they did. So but the match was good. It just I just don't like the idea that people are coming out and talking about oh it, it, it was it wasn't supposed to explode and then Tony Khan's like no we wanted to want two guys to get killed come stop 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 you just insulted the wrestling fans because they were expecting an explosion don't promote something that you're not gonna come through with my second topic coming up is the inner circle uh, situation so for months I've been talking about the inner circle might be breaking up. And the MJF may be the new leader of the inner circle. So we thought that that was going to happen. As of Wednesday, everything looked like uh, it was going to happen. They were going to get rid of Jericho because Sammy Guevara shows up out of nowhere after leaving uh, inner circle a couple of weeks, a couple of months, uh, probably a month ago. Shows up with a video showing uh, a clip of where MJF was talking to the rest of the guys and let's talk about what we were talking about. We need new leaders. So pretty much... It was a video showing that uh, MJF was about to t do a coup and take over the inner circle. At first, it looked like they was going to jump on on Jericho. But then Jericho said, what do you think? We, we stupid. We talk to each other every day. 
and MJF got fired from the inner circle. And the beautiful thing was when MJF said, you're not the only one creating an inner circle. And soon the lights went out. I was wondering who it was. And out of nowhere, you see FTR, Tully Blanchard, Sean Spears, and Warlow. Now, there was a podcaster who, in his thumbnail, put it as the new Four Horsemen. If you're going to say that's the new Four Horsemen, then somebody's got to go because there's only four, it's five guys. And then you got Tully Blanchard mixing six. So you can't call them the Four Horsemen. Maybe that's a, you could call it the FH, um, FH version two. Or you could call them the Revelation. You could call them a lot of things, but you cannot call them the Four Horsemen because there's five guys. With Tully Blanchard mixing six. Warlord looked it awesome. Waller came out with his hair loose and with a tank top. He's pretty. And they made the presence known. Now we have another faction in there. So we got Dark Order. We have the group of FTR. You got Inner Circle. You have Matt Hardy Empire. So there's gonna there's a bunch of factions in AEW. But I want to know what's going to be the name of this faction that MJF is going to be part of. Now, is MJF going to be part of? of the four supposedly four horsemen and warlow is the bodyguard and maybe later on there's a fallout between mjf and warlow then warlow goes on his own like a lex luger type of thing from back in the days that could happen i honestly um been wanting a four horseman since probably eight months ago eight months ago i made a video on youtube that it was the four horsemen ready to ride in AEW. If you guys could go back and think some like eight months ago on my on my YouTube channel, you can find the video. And and the reason I said that at that time, because you had Tully Blanchard, you had Art Anson, you had Sean Spear on the Tully Blanchard, FDR came in and Sean Spears and Tully Blanchard were watching a lot of the FTR matches. As it turned out, Tully Blanchard ends up being the manager of FTR, ends up the manager of Sean Spears. So now you have three guys. The only guy that I kind of like uh who's gonna be the fourth guy i figure because our anderson manages him was the uh cody as far as cody's concerned he's now too busy now i'm gonna have a few with penta uh that's probably gonna start uh starting next week um so does cody and fit in it not no more now with mjf and and warlow is in there so warlow could be the bodyguard this could be the new four horsemen or they could be called a revelation I mean, let me know what you guys think about this. Let me know what your comments, um, you know, because now there's, a, there's like four factions in AEW. You got the Inner Circle. Now you got this group. You got the Dark Order. And then you got Matt Hardy's um, Empire. So, um, because if you guys saw it last week, Butch and the Blade ended up being part of Matt Hardy's. Uh, I think it was going to be TH2. But, and Dark Order will have to get a, a female but Anna J just had surgery yesterday, so she's gonna be out for probably six, seven months. And the word is that they they're probably gonna put Mikey Mikey Ito, the 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 female Japanese that I got a f friend of mine who's fucking in love with this chick, and I don't find her at all. Uh, you know, they're talking about she's legendary in, in Japan. I'm like, what she's legendary for? Because her wrestling skill is not all that. She plays too much to the crowd. She's com a comedy act. That's what she is. She is not all that. And I'm going to say it right now. I don't know how many know Maki Ito fans that are here. But honestly, this is the problem with the women's division also. You keep bringing in these Japanese women. And this is all Kenny Omega. Because Kenny Omega is the one who's running the women's division. All his gay jeans. And he loves all that bullcrap animated type looking wrestlers. And this is what it, this is. What it is. Because Rio Mizunami... When she was wrestling on Wednesday, she was doing that stupid thing about pulling a rope and wasted so much time to play to the crowd. I'm not a big fan of that shit. You know, playing to the crowd. And then if you're playing to the crowd, when you come back to your, your offense, you should get poking the eye or kicking the knee or something. And they, no, they're playing to the fan. This is why the AEW Women's Division is such in a shamble. Okay. The best few right now going on is Thunder Rosa with, with Britt Baker. Uh, now they're signing a no lights out match for next week, and I bet you Britt Baker wins again because this Reba Reba's got to be counting. 
she's got to be counted. Somebody's got to be in, in Thunder Rose's corner because as long as Rebel or Reba, whatever her name is, is in Britt Baker's corner, it's going to be interference, and this girl is going to win the match again, making it look like Britt Baker is a better wrestler than the Rosa, and she's not. Thunder Rosa is way better wrestler than Britt Baker, and, you know, um, I don't know. Uh, so there's a lot of stuff going on in AEW that I'm not very happy with, and I'm not one that knocks um, AEW for some stuff because it's still a young promotion. But Tony Khan needs to stop this bullcrap. Don't promote something that is not going to happen because that explosion bar wire match was a good match. You should have let it explode. Whether the things were going to be outside, even if it's not real, whatever, you have to make it. You had to satisfy your customers, and you didn't. And that was that's where you heard booze in the daily place. People were disappointed. So for anybody to say, "Oh, you know, they wasn't supposed to," whatever, then I guess you like disappointments. Bottom line, you know, what I'm saying that you cannot promote something and you don't come through for your for your fans. I'm sorry, because then you're gonna look like WWE. Same thing, you know. You might as well bring the gobbly gooker. You know, remember that? Remember that back in nineteen like 1990. When the Undertaker uh, 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 debut as a virus series, and everybody thought that the person who was coming out the 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 egg was supposed to be his wrestler or whatever, and came out to be a damn turkey of uh, somebody in a turkey suit. Well, if they keep on with this book, right, that's exactly what it's going to be like the Gobbly Google or disappointments after disappointments. And I'm one; I don't really knock AEW because they pretty much they started the matches, they started the show with a bang. But what I've been seeing the last couple of months let's just be like what the hell are you doing and then you're signing everybody you're signing everybody paul white you just signed christian stop stop picking up these wwe has-beens okay because they don't do nothing for the product nothing okay so stop and, and the worst one was when Shaq was taken into a damn freaking ambulance and then all of a sudden he disappears like he's an undertaker no see what i'm talking about and people oh this is cool this is sad. The wrestling, the wrestling community, and the wrestling business is sad right now. This is this is horrible. You know what I'm saying? I could take a little, you know, nostalgia here and there, but it's it's been horrible. The rest, last couple of weeks, AEW, the Shaq disappearing from the from the damn room, from the damn ambulance, the non explosion on 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 the bar wire match, and then you know, it just continues, continues. You know, it's just it's just nonsense. And then the explanations that Tony Khan gave after the dud. No, this, this, this has to stop. This has to stop because, you know, TNA did this a couple of years against trying to fight with WWE and they ended up what? Almost went out of business. So if AEW don't get their shit together, they will be going out of business. In probably five years if they freaking continue signing all these guys with all these young talent you got. I don't care how many shows you got. You got to push the, the stars. The Brian Cage. The freaking um, the Lucha Brothers, you split them up and you put them together. Pac, you got to push all these guys. Stop pushing guys like Christian. Why Why was he even signed, to be honest? I'm not a big fan of his. He's a Mick Carter. I don't care about oh, who's a former world champion. And titles don't mean shit in WWE, in case you guys don't know. They give the belt to anybody. Okay, They give the belt to Miz. That's how much they value their belts. So. That is it for me today, guys. And yes, I sound like upset because it's just annoying. I've been like pissed off the last couple of weeks with the bullshit and the nonsense that I've been seeing in professional wrestling. And me as a professional wrestling fan, not a sports entertainment fan, a pro wrestling entertainment fan, I just pretty much, I really, I'm annoyed. I'm very annoyed with all the bullcrap. And this is why I sit down and watch New Japan. And I'd rather watch all the New Japan in the world, which I'll be doing some coverage on the New Japan Cup. Which I haven't had a chance to sit down and watch. But this is this guy stop. You know what I'm saying? You're talking about the forbidden door? The forbidden door is gonna be closed very soon if they don't get their shit together. AEW needs to get this shit together. Even though they, they already announced that Kenny Omega versus Moose, which is gonna be Moose, because sacrifices tomorrow, Moose will win the belt. It's gonna be Kenny Omega versus Moose at Rebellion. So for impact for next month. So that is it guys for me. Um, again, if you guys want to follow me on social media, you can follow me on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. You can also follow me on the audio podcast on Spotify, Apple, Google, to, uh, Stitcher, any audio, any audio podcast that you guys like to listen. The Chokeslide Wrestling Report is on audio also. So like I said, you can see me here 
on the YouTube or you go hear me through these uh, outlets that I just mentioned. And I even on Amazon podcast. Shout out to um, Power 4 a streaming online channel. Um, again, guys, thank you for um, continuing me to have on your streaming online channels. Um, shout out to the UK. I know you guys are out there on lockdown to June. Um, also follow my boy WNR podcast. I just did a podcast with my ba- my my babe, <laughs> my boy James Rowland. Uh, we just did the rev- AEW review. You can find him on Sound. Uh, is it, what is it? SoundCloud? You can find him on SoundCloud, and you can find him also on Apple Podcasts. The WNR podcast. Shout out to my boy uh, D from Eleven Thirty Podcast. Give me a shout out, guy. Um, thanks a lot. We got to do something together very soon. So that's going to happen very soon, probably by the end of the month. So again, guys, be safe, wear your mask, and stay six feet apart. I will be back with you next Friday with more wrestling roundup. Again, let me know what you think of this video, your comments. You may not agree with some of my stuff, which I'm all right with that. Agree to disagree. But AEW needs to get this stuff together. Start giving these wrestlers too much leeway of creativity. And Tony Khan needs to stop promoting himself that he doesn't come through. I mean, yes, this is the first time he does that. But if you allow him to get away with this one, he's going to keep doing it. So, I mean, I know he's a big wrestling fan and big wrestling, you know, geek, should we say. But and now he owns the company. Well, he's been owning the company, but it got to stop. So until then, guys, be well, be safe, and God bless.